The city. My city. A city of despair and hope. A city of donuts and pretzels. A city of brown starfish and hot dog water. A city of rainbow parties. Look it up, it's a thing. It is super hot. It's all the way live. But the city is my city. I'm not the guardian they appointed. I'm the guardian they demanded. Joker! Oh god, is this one of those crossover fanfics? So the first thing each player is going to do is we're each going to draw a random superhero from the random pile. So I will be the Martian Manhunter. After that, we're each going to get seven punches. Punches are worth one power, and we're going to take three vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities are worth absolutely nothing. Basically, vulnerabilities just take up space in your deck. We'll shuffle it all together, and we'll draw five cards. I'm going to use my three power to purchase something off the lineup. Because I'm playing the Martian Manhunter, I would normally want to purchase either a hero or a villain. However, I do not have enough power to do that. So instead, I will look at the cards available to me and pick the X-ray vision. So the cost on this card is three. It doesn't give me any extra power, but it has a special ability. After that, I will take all of the cards that I used in that turn and I will place them in my discard pile. Then I will draw five more cards, and that is the end of my turn. Starting the next turn, the next player will have his five cards in hand, and then will draw out the next card and place it into the lineup. The way we achieve victory in this game is that through the power available to us in our hands, we will eventually have enough to purchase the supervillains. As I purchase the supervillain, I would put it into my discard pile just like any other card I would use. And the next player will flip over the following supervillain. Each time a supervillain is revealed, there's a first appearance attack. So a lot of times the villains are a bit of an issue. Once all the villains have been purchased, we will use the stars in the bottom corner of the cards, each ranging in value between one and about six, and tally up the total amount of victory points that we have. Once we figure out who has the most victory points, they're declared the winner, and we go on. And what else could you want? Justice! <laughs> Today I am playing the Green Lantern. Today I'm playing Aquaman, the most underrated superhero ever. I'm Batman. Right, I have three power. Uh, I am going to purchase... I'll purchase... Yeah, I'll purchase Poison Ivy. And then... I draw out five. And it is Jeff's turn. Uh, I will use my... Four punches to buy Supergirl, who is going to be Aquaman's girlfriend. Oh, and uh, I may put any cards of cost five or less you buy on the top of my deck. Well, there you go. So put that there. Yep, and then draw out five. Two, three, four, five. Awesome. Three punches. Two of these wussy vulnerabilities and buy me the power ring. Aquaman is under the sea. 
and punches don't do as much damage as a nice seahorse kick. I guess we need to put this down. Yeah. <gasps> Aquaman's trident! I will pay three for Aquaman's trident now! Oh, now! Oh, he's equipment sniped out of the marketplace. And there's another Aquaman. Ooh, I can have two. Except for. No, you he's can't. Gonna... Yeah. yeah. You totally can't. Each foe reveals the top card of his deck. Doomsday! Oh, you don't even need to. Nah. I'm gonna take Doomsday. Alright, uh, so I'll take the four power from him. Uh, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and I gain any card of cost four or less from the lineup. Oh, just buy him and end this raid. And then buy that. Yeah. And then I'll put this. It down. doesn't matter, game's over. Game's over. Alright. This game has several. This game has several problems. First of which is that normally you're not allowed to select your own superhero, which to me seems like a real problem because when people come into a game, especially a game with a built-in canon like DC Comics, you already have your favorite character. So, I mean, if you don't want to play Green Lantern, and you get stuck with Green Lantern, you kind of feel like a heel. The problem is, is that each of these cards, while they do a good job trying to fit like the theme or the feel of what that superhero is like, the real problem, in my opinion, is that you, unless you unless the marketplace bears out those right cards, you never really seem to get ex to exploit their abilities. When uh, you do get to, it's super. Fun. But it's it's like with Superman and Batman, for example, it's super dependent on whatever the hell comes out of that marketplace. Mm -hmm. And if the right cards don't come out and don't get sniped out by somebody, it never hap It never helps. I also find that. <laughs> It seems like this game is less about trying to make sure op deck optimization and building a deck, and more about trying to mitigate bloat. But I guess a bloat, a bloat mitigation game doesn't sound as catchy. I like playing Aquaman and kicking and punching my way to victory. It was really neat. Um, Supergirl kicked your way to victory. Let's yeah. Supergirl, fair. yeah, Supergirl, yeah. who's Aquaman's girlfriend, won the game for me. Just like in real life, where my girlfriend wins the game for me. Uh, now there is there is some things with it. It's really easy to hate buy. Like it's easy to pull things away from other players. To be fair, this does operate a bit better than Marvel's uh, yeah. contender here, which is legendary. So. It, it, that This is a stronger entry into it, but I still feel like as a deck-building game, it's got a lot of problems in it. Um, well, I think that's the nature of any deck-builder, though, is that if you talk to competitive players in that genre, they want games to be that you can hate buy, because uh, it's a strategy. Right. Uh, it's and just it's like valid it's just like too. drafting in Magic. You can hate draft. In, Absolutely, in it's magic. completely valid to snipe out uh, stuff. I mean, there yeah. are some combinations in this game that are really cool. Like, Jeff honestly had a really cool combination where he was very capable early on of controlling the economy, which is a viable option for winning. I mean, and he, having a superpower that's agnostic yeah. to whatever's on the marketplace is yes. really potent. Yeah. It really is. I think like this game would be vastly improved if it took the note from High Command. This is the last time we'll talk about High Command, I swear. Yeah. But if they took the note from High Command, of every time you have to shuffle your draw deck back, you have the opportunity to cull one card. See, that out. would be really nice. That actually would be really, really nice because it that would dramatically keep this game changes it. Much, much more well paced because it would now have you to can't be, bog yourself down. It would with have to be specific to you can take a starter card out. Okay, I can and even, rather I can than taking that. the weaknesses out, right. because weaknesses, those weaknesses is a strategy. are really supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a strategy that people can use. If you're a DC fan uh, and a fan of all of the DC universe, this game will be fun for your friends who aren't playing a lot of uh, playing a lot of board games. I think if you're a hardcore uh, gamer or if you really like deck building games as a genre, I think there are stronger entries in the genre. I'm gonna, I'm gonna half agree with Stu. I really think that this is a mid-level game. Very, very good for people who want to move from the basic entry of board games into something a little different. Um, like I said, we've played it a lot, and I really, really enjoy the game. Um, sometimes it's frustrating, as are any game when you start losing. Um, but 
all in all, it's a it's a good solid game. DC deck building, the only place where Aquaman is actually powerful. That's a fair point. Thanks for watching. If you like us, subscribe. Subscribe to our channel.